This is the most commonly used metal clay firing pan. It's made of stainless steel and it's a good choice because it can take the high heat that we fire to. One drawback to this type of stainless steel is that it really wasn't designed to go to the extreme temperatures that we heat it to when we're firing metal clay. The high heat oxidizes the surface and then it begins to flake off in a process that's called spalling. And this can continue for several hours and it'll make a big mess inside the kiln and anywhere else that you put this container. This box is made from a special high temperature alloy that does not flake, so it won't mess up the inside of your kiln. This special material is called no flake foil and you can make just about any size custom firing pan from it. To remove it from the container, I'm going to very carefully grab the end of it because it is thick and very sharp and twist this and then I can pull it out. I'm going to cut a piece 7 inches by 9 inches for the firing box. I'm going to use a ball burnisher to scribe a mark and then I can cut this material with ordinary scissors. Once I have my piece, I need a burnisher and I find that the wedge from my ring clamp makes the perfect burnishing tool. Now here where I've cut with the scissors it's really really rough so I'm going to burnish that down and smooth it out. And now I'm going to fold it in half the long way and I want to make sure that I line the edges up really really well and then Press it down to get my crease. And then use my burnishing tool to burnish it down. Now I want to open it up flat and use the burnisher to flatten out that fold. Now I'll fold one of these up to the first crease line, making sure that I have a nice smooth fold and it's not kinked. and burnish that flat. Same thing on this side. Make sure that's nice and smooth so it can bend easily. And burnish that one. Now I'll open it up and turn it over so that I can burnish these folds down flat. Get this started with my fingers and then use the burnisher to flatten these out so it lays nice and flat. Now I'm going to fold it in half the other way. Make sure I've got a nice smooth curve here so that it doesn't kink. Line these up really nice. I'll get a better looking box if I can line these up. And then I'll use my burnisher to burnish in between these seams. And then I'll open this up and burnish this fold flat. And then I'm going to, just like the other one, fold these up to the halfway mark. Make sure that I've got a nice smooth fold so that it doesn't kink. And then press these down and get that lined up just right and then I'll burnish it down so I have a nice crisp fold and I'll repeat this on the other side making sure that it's a nice smooth fold line that up press it and then burnish it Now I'm going to use the edge of the clamp wedge to help me make a bend here at the corner. Bend it right at the crease and then lay it along the edge so it's nice and straight. I'm going to repeat this on each of the corners. I just hold the wedge right on the line and bend that up. Then burnish it down. There's a little flap left over. I'm going to lay the ruler along the edge of it and then use the sharp end of the wedge to lift up the flap 
and make a nice sharp bend here along the ruler. Press that down. And then I'll repeat that for the other flap. Use the wedge to lift it up and burnish it against the ruler so I can get a nice crisp line. And then I'll press that down and then I'll burnish both of these down nice and flat. And then I just pop the box open and then I can adjust the shape a little bit. Then this little flap here, the edge of the flap, I like to tuck this under so that it doesn't get stuck when I try to take the lid on and off. And then I'll use the wedge to perfect the bends and burnish down all of the seams so that the box is nice and square. To make the lid, start with a piece that's seven and a quarter by nine and a quarter and make it the exact same way and you'll end up with a beautifully fitted lid. If vents are needed, they can be cut into the top with a razor blade. Here's what the box looks like after it's been fired. The heat of the kiln has blackened the foil, but it's not flaking because it's designed to be heated at this very high temperature. It also doesn't warp. And what's interesting is that the material actually becomes stiffer after it's fired, so you end up with a very sturdy little container that you can make any size that you want. It doesn't dirty up the inside of your kiln, and it's really low cost.